Never expect Japanese schools to be like anime. Now, if you watched any slice of life anime or action anime, you might have wondered, Hey, are Japanese schools actually like that? And now, as a citizen of Japan, Matsusama, who went to a local school in Osaka for half of my life, I felt obliged to share these secrets and dive deep into Japanese schools, anime versus real life. So that you will know what high school in Japan is actually like comparing anime with real life cold hard truth. First, we have to admit that the uniform or seifuku in Japanese are totally different. The school uniforms in anime definitely tends to be more colorful, but not just colorful, kawaii. The skirts are shorter, the ribbons are a little bit bigger, there's more pastel and plaid with color that you will not see. And of course you could attribute a good amount of that to the fan service community of anime. You know, you gotta, you know, you gotta deal with the fan service. Some, some people like it, obviously that's why they have it, but some people it's like, ah, oh, why you gotta do that to me? Why you gotta do that? However, in reality, like you might have guessed, seifuku and the appearance of it are much more toned down. The skirts are typically at least knee length, and a lot of times even longer than the knee length to go way below the knee cap area. And colors tend to be more in the navy, black, or beige area. And the variety of seifuku tends to be not as diverse as anime, and it tends to be the three types one being the blazer and a shirt, and the pants or skirt for the bottom. A sailor style uniforms, you've seen it with the ribbons, those are known as sailor, serafuku. And then the gakuran, which are black uniforms with those golden kind of buttons going all the way up the collar. Also, you will most likely not be allowed to have tons of jewelry to show that accessory that you might have seen in anime characters, and then you will not be able to dye your hair. Dyeing hair is most likely prohibited unless you could prove that your natural hair is not black or really dark brown. So all those jewelry, swag, dyed hair you see on anime is probably unrealistic or not even possible. Sometimes though, anime, it's not really that they're dyed, maybe they just have different color hair. But anyways, no dyed hair. And sometimes even makeup could be banned. Not all the time, but sometimes makeups are banned and especially egregious makeup. Whoa, Masu, what do you mean egregious? Or well, egregious could come in the forms of, I think, um, eyelash extensions, that's, that could be egregious. <laughs> it's not me, I'm not setting up the rules. Uh, uh red lips. <laughs> Anyways, you get the point. But I would say even though the characteristics or the colors are definitely more subdued than anime, those type of style does exist in that those blazer with a shirt can be kind of cool, very much fitting and the seirafuku will be more on the kawaii side than any other seifuku around the world. And I do think the ribbons is kind of cute, so personally, if I had to wear a uniform every single day, I wouldn't mind wearing a little seifuku in Japan because I don't have to choose what I have to wear, and I think I'll look good in it. Second, let's do a deep dive on how popularity actually works in Japanese schools. Now, if you ever see any school-based anime, you will always have this popular protagonist character. Let's say, if it's a guy, if it's a male character, then it's a character that all the girls and boys like and respect. Typically, he's good looking, really smart, aces every test, he could play sports, and he could play an instrument. Sort of like a classic renaissance man. And those characters can have literal active female fans that support that man's endeavors within any realm. They might come support the games or the sports that that person is playing. And this is actually more common than you think even in real life. If someone is popular, they tend to have like an overall group of respect and girls will openly say that they all like that guy and it does happen. Or at the very least, respect that guy. Now what's funny is that obviously it is somewhat exaggerated in anime, like you can't have blonde hair that stays in place for every action shot, you can't win the Nobel Peace Prize, you can't play the violin and the piano at the same time, you can't sumo wrestle and then play soccer at a professional level. But the pursuit of perfection in every realm of human endeavor as a renaissance man is what makes someone popular in Japan. 
every single endeavor. Like I personally think this is a key difference of what makes the popularity game quite different from Japan and the United States of America that I have experienced in. Like in the US, the popularity game kind of tends to be just pure status, looks, and maybe sports if it's like football for guys. Like if you have those quality, those few qualities, then you could be a pretty big baka, but still have popularity for some reason. There is no overall sense of accomplishments in an all human endeavor, which I think is sort of a loss because you know, a pursuit for any human should be in all kind of realms that you could be proficient at that includes sports exercise intelligence i guess the arts and all that combined should be a pursuit for any any human a little bit kind of like the samurai being able to write haikus or poems at the same time practicing aikido on the same day like i'm not saying if you're a little bit of a baka you shouldn't get any respect but if you can't play cello and and violin at the same time no respect and this applies for girls as well. Popular girls tend to have this aura of perfection. Most, if not all, realms of human endeavors, just like I mentioned before. And it's not that you cannot be popular if you don't have these qualities, but the end goal or pursuit is all those qualities. So if you take some of that over-exaggeration out of those anime, you could kind of see how popularity works and how people view those who are popular in Japan could look like. If you like this video so far, please leave a like. It really helps out this video and pushing it out. And if you want to become a bilingual and finally master Japanese and begin your training arc, I have Skillshare courses in order. Hiragana, the most basic writing system in Japanese for you to write and pronounce each letter and word in the Japanese language. Katakana, the second writing system so that you can write your own names as well as any international slash foreign loan words that Japanese people use all the time, spaghetti. Then basic Japanese grammar, one for you to write your first sentence in Japanese to introduce yourself using a paragraph. And then basic grammar, two so that you will learn verbs with all its confusing conjugations explained by me, Matsusama. I'll see you there for you to start your training arc to mastering Japanese. Three, I want to talk about romance in real life versus anime in Japanese schools. Now romance dating or having a girlfriend and boyfriend does have actually quite a few similarities but keen differences. Now by now if you watch plenty of anime you would have noticed how delicate the romantic parts of Japanese schools and Japanese culture can be. It's, it's, a, it's a delicate process. Like, they can rarely kiss. You could watch a whole season, a whole anime, or literally a romance anime where the main female protagonist and the male protagonist, they don't kiss, they might not even hug. Nani? But I would say it is actually true even in real life that Japanese romance in general tends to be more slow and mental than just physical. Like, it is more typical for two people to spend more time as friends or acquaintances for a pretty long time before they make it even a little bit romantic. And why is that? Nande, nande matsama? Well, obviously, if two people look at each other, they could, you know, they have two sets of eyes, so they could tell the other person is attractive physically, but typically that's just not gonna be enough. This is because it is more mental than physical for most romantic relationships to form, so it would take much longer time of understanding what that person likes or dislikes, how that person reacts in different circumstances or contexts. And with those, it makes a romantic feeling take much longer to legitimately develop. However, once one party Typically a guy, but doesn't have to be, officially starts liking the other person. Then we move on pretty quickly to the confession, the kokuhaku. So kokuhaku literally means confession in Japanese. And it's where one party will, in a disclosed setting, tell another party that I, skida, I like you. And if the other party accepts the invitation, then officially from that day, from that moment on, you two will be girlfriends and boyfriends. The relationship is officially established. What's important to note again is that after the kokuhaku is done, it's official to everyone that you two will be dating and you two will be seen as a couple until you may break up or get married. So in most time, there's no in-between period of 
how are we, are we kind of dating? No, it's either you're dating or you're not. So you better make that confession work. If you remember or if you watched Bunny Girl, Senpai, Rascal, something like that, you remember that scene where Sakuta confesses outside the school, they officially become a couple. But again, it could take pretty long for that confession to happen, typically. Another confession scene, a little bit of funky confession scene I remember is in a silent voice where Shoko tries to tell Shoya that I like you by saying tsuki, but she unfortunately says tsuki, which he thinks it's moon. Tsuki means I like you, but tsuki means moon, so. But those are the kind of confession moments. Tsuki saying I like you officially is everyone will understand it as an uh, invitation to become a couple officially, in which you could deny or accept. A Silent Voice is a golden movie, so you should check it out if you haven't yet. Hopefully now you understand the truth between real life versus anime in Japanese schools. Leave a comment and a like, it really helps out the channel, I promise. And if you want a free email newsletter to learn Japanese from me in a more bite-sized mail letter, check out the link in the description to sign up, as well as Nihongo Master, where you could get a hundred plus lessons for you to truly become a bilingual in Japanese. Peace!